in 2015, the Russian Caspian Flotilla launched 26 caliber cruise missiles against armed groups on the Syrian battlefield. These missiles were launched by small ships that Russia was proud of, but they also reflect the perplexity of the Russian Navy, especially in the carrier issue. Russia does not currently have the resources to build large warships. Most of the large ships on Russia's naval service today built during the Soviet era. Russia's largest warship is the aircraft carrier Kuznetsov, with a displacement of more than 60,000 tons. The former Soviet Union attached great importance to ships carrying anti-ship missiles. If counting from the time when the helicopter carrier Moscow entered service in the 1960s, to the Kiev-class carrier and later series of aircraft carriers or cruisers, they attached great importance to the equipment of long-range anti-ship missiles. At the end of the Cold War, the Soviet Union built its own two carriers, the Kuznetsov and Juni Anovska. Although it was an aircraft carrier, it was still a hybrid design with a missile warship. Below the deck, heavy anti ship missiles were still located, launched via vertical launch systems. The successor Russia followed the philosophy of the Soviet Navy. In the third decade of the 21st century, the early carrier of the Russian Navy, the Kuznetsov, maintained this controversial anti ship missile system. In contrast, after China purchased the Varyark, a ship similar to the Kuznetsov, now the Liaoling carrier. In the course of subsequent completion, 12 heavy anti-ship missile launchers were removed to increase the aircraft compartment area. By the Shandong version, based on the Liaoling design, China has completely abandoned the design of heavy anti-ship missile layout below deck. As a result, the number of fighters in Shandong increased to 36, while the Liaoling only carries a maximum of 24. So the combat capability of the air wing has been greatly enhanced. Given that the number of aircraft on a carrier is an important indicator to measure her combat effectiveness, why not the Russian Navy do the same thing on the Kuznetsov as the Shandong? Why does Russia still place missiles on aircraft carriers, which affects her combat effectiveness? This philosophy of the Russian Navy is influenced by a long history dating back to the Soviet era. In the past, the Soviet leader also intended to build a powerful carrier fleet, like the navies of Western nations. However, World War II changed plans, and especially the introduction of anti ship missiles, changing the minds of Soviet army leaders. The Soviet Union developed a wide range of anti ship missiles, from P 5 anti ship missiles to be 700 granite when the Soviet Union disintegrated. Admittedly, the Soviet anti ship missiles caused panic and anxiety for the US and Western navies. It was not until the end of the Cold War that the Soviet Union began to design rear aircraft carriers. However, Soviet military leaders maintained that a Soviet carrier 
with long range antisimitors could create an asymmetrical advantage over the aircraft carrier of the U.S. Navy, which had early aircraft. In fact, the Soviet Navy lagged far behind the United States in carrier field. To gain an advantage for the Soviet Navy in a confrontation with the mighty U.S. Navy fleet, the Soviet Union built aircraft carriers but still armed with a large number of long-range missiles. Time has entered the 21st century, inheriting the legacy of the Soviet Union, and the distance between the Russian Navy and the U.S. Navy becomes even greater. Russia cannot maintain a regular presence in the oceans as it did in the Soviet era. Based on the Cold War philosophy mentioned above, where the number and size of ships of the Russian Navy is insufficient. Therefore, Russian naval ships need to be equipped with anti missiles capable of forming an asymmetrical capability, at least in the short term. So the Kuznetsov aircraft carrier clearly made a lot of sense to keep the B-700 Granite Heavy anti missile launchers below deck. And now, it is much easier to train, equip, and execute a large-scale missile strike than to plan and conduct an air strike of the same size from carrier. For this reason, anti missile carriers still exist in the Russian Navy. This may also explain why Russia continues to have a large number of missiles on aircraft carriers. In the case of a Thai airship, the use of missiles to form asymmetrical combat power on carriers can achieve greater efficiency. My video about why didn't Russia eliminate anti missiles on Admiral Kuznetsov's of carrier like China Yaoling Ansir. Thank you for watching. You find this video interesting. Please give me your thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to support the channel. Goodbye and see you again in the next videos.